Hi guys, this is a video over PP 4.1 transformations day two. So let's start. Number one, describe the series of transformations in order. So sequence matters, the order matters, and then write the equation of g of x. Okay, so let's see g of x is the green one so there's the parent function and when i mean when in doubt i always like to make a table just just to see but i already know it's a reflection over the x-axis okay um but i'm just gonna make a table zero zero and then one, one, negative one, one. And this is for f of x. <clears throat> and then we can proceed to put two, four and negative two, four if we want. Okay, and then let's look at g of x. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and write g of x right here. Um, we have a negative 4, 0, and then a, let's see, negative 3, and negative 1, and a negative 5, and negative 1. I think based on those points, I can, we can kind of get... A conclusion but let's go ahead and write one more point negative 2 negative 5 negative 3 negative 2 negative 4 okay so first of all I'm gonna compare the two vertex and the vertex kind of gives me the left right up and down movement um, it won't give me any kind of uh, information about dilations, about multiplying x or y, but that's definitely going to give me the uh, what I need for the left and right up or down movement. Because when you multiply 0, 0, which is the origin of the vertex of the parent function, it's the origin where the vertex is of the parent function, it just turns into 0. So it what it reveals is just the up and down movement. Okay, so let's take a look um we subtract this by x by four okay so we know that we have to subtract x by four but if i take these and subtract x by four i'm going to get a negative four zero and then i'm going to get a uh, negative three uh one and a negative five one and a uh, negative two four just going to end it there and compare it to the g of x uh, compare those to the g of x okay i think we've finished with the x's notice that the x's just line up they just match up very nicely now the y's now if you take a look at the y values Okay, basically, um, the first, the vertex didn't change, negative 4, 0 didn't change. But if you took it 1, 1, and 4, all you did was multiply this by a negative 1. Okay, so if I'm describing what happened, they, the negative 4 on the x, the subtract 4 on the x, and the multiply by negative 1 on the y's, do not really have to be in sequence. Okay, so I can write that uh, now. This is, uh, we can just say moved left four and reflected over the x axis. Okay. Now, some of you guys still are confused about reflecting over the x-axis or reflecting over the y-axis, but when you multiply the y-values, it's a reflection over the x-axis, okay? So, 
let's see, how do I create this equation? So we started off with a f of x equals x squared. So I could write this two ways. Okay, I could just take g of x. And since I need to subtract 4, it's going to be x plus 4 squared. Add 4. Remember, anything that's attached to the x, you have to take the opposite or the reciprocal. Okay, and then we're going to multiply the y values by a negative 1. So I'm going to negative 1. And there is no upper right movement, so that's your final answer. Or you could write it as g of x equals negative, and then you can do f, um, you don't need a parenthesis there, f of x, whoops, open up that x, and then put a plus 4. And that way you don't have to put a square, because f of x defines the function already. Okay, those are your two correct answers. And good job, guys. Okay, so the way that I taught this last year is a little bit different than what I may show you, but we have a choice. We can make, let's go ahead and first write down the table, f of x, and we have a 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and then 2 and 4, and negative 2 and 4. And then we have uh, x and g of x. And then we, I'm just going to write down the vertex first. We know that it looks like it could either be a horizontal stretch or a vertical compression. It looks like it could either be a horizontal stretch at the green function or a vertical compression it compressed down now the best way to do this is just just pick one and last year what i had told the students is that the best way to do this is just to do a vertical stretch or a compression so that it's that would be the y value that gets multiplied and if you stay consistent like that with the y value being multiplied um then you don't have to look at the reciprocal. You don't have to worry about the reciprocal because it's not the x value, okay? So <clears throat> when I look at the y value and we need to deal with the y value, I can take care of the x values first, okay? Because for the y values, all of this right here, for the y values, whenever I start listing the y values um, and compare it with these y values, um, if I just keep it with that, we have to first multiply these numbers and then add 2 to get to the g of x, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the y values, okay, because that's more a little bit more complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the x values and I'm going to add 3 because that's how we get to the x. We're not going to deal with multiplication on both because that gets a little bit more confusing. Okay, so when I add 2 to the values, I get 0, 3, and I get 4, 1. And let's see, 4, 1, and is it 2? one and then we look at uh five four and one four okay when i look at these values right here on this table compared to these values right here we notice that these are in increments of one okay and these are in increments well, well, two and then, yeah, they are kind of in the increments of one. If I do a negative two, yeah, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five. They are in increments of one. Okay. Um, and so I have to see how the y change. It's kind of like slope. Okay. So if I can make an equation out of this, 
just looking at the y values okay i have to take uh this first number zero okay zero and i have to multiply it by some kind of value okay because it's going to be some kind of a vertical uh compression okay uh and if i take that and i add two to it right because we saw that it's adding by two right here the vertex reveals that and it's going to equal two and that's it's true, but it's not going to reveal what A is because the number is zero. But if I take that and take the next value, one, okay. So if you look at this value and this value in comparison, that's the origin. And the next is going to be right here. And then we have to look at four, where four falls. Because the X values are going to be right. So I can rewrite this on here. Four and two and five and one okay if i take a look at four it looks like it's around 2.5 and then if i take two two it looks like it's about 2.5 and if i take five it looks like it's four and if i take one it looks like it's four okay um five and four did not change and one and four did not change so i'm going to take a look at this one compared to that one and how that changed okay how did we bring this one and it became 2.5 so we take one and we have to multiply it by a value and then we add two because we are going to eventually add this by two for it to become two and that becomes 2.5. Subtract 2 on both sides, and A times 1 equals 0 0.5. So A becomes 0 0.5. So I can check. Okay, so first I need to take these values and multiply by 1 half, and then add 2. Okay, multiplying 0 by 1 half gives you 2. It gives you zero and then add two multiplying that by one half one by one half and then adding two gives you 2.5 multiplying this by half gives you uh, four by half is two so add two to it you get four so that's how that gets established now there's a way for you to write it as the x but this is just so that it doesn't get so complicated okay so i'm going to go ahead and rewrite that and rewrite the sequence that it happened for x we're just going to add three or a description with that of that would be we went right three and for y First, we have to multiply by one half, a scale factor of one half, or since it asks for a description, okay, and not exactly what happens to y, that would be a vertical compression. And then number two, we add two, or a description of that would be going up two. So the way we would write that function is g of x. g of x from x is we're going to take the y values, multiply it by one half x, open that up, and minus three, remember it's plus three, but we're gonna swap that and plus two. Okay, so that should be the final answer. Now, another way of doing that instead of um, this equation that I created, okay, maybe a little bit confusing, is that for most, for everything that we do, Okay, there's going to be some kind of a starting point. Square root functions have a starting point. Um, cubic functions 
has that kind of uh, inflection point. Um, quadratics have a vertex. Absolute values have a vertex. And that first point, okay, from the vertex or that kind of critical point, inflection point, or it's always going to be a right one and up one. Well, for parabolas, it's always going to be a right one and up one. Okay, but if I look here and I look at the same distance that it goes right one, it shows that it went up one half. Okay, that right there already reveals the vertical scale factor that it changed. That reveals the vertical scale factor. That means I took one and I multiplied it by uh, one half. I mean, whatever that, you have to keep the right one consistent, okay? But if you go up one half, that means that I decrease the size of the Y values by half. That reveals the scale factor right there, okay? Hope this helps. That's another way, okay? When it gets really confusing, I used to have the kids write, like, write one, up one, and then the change would be right one and up one half. And then to take that, I would multiply this by one half to get to there, okay? And to up one half, that would be on the Y, because when you go up or down, that would be Y. And so that gives you the scale factor of one half. Okay, good job. Okay, next one. It says the graphs of a function f and s are transformations of graph s. Write the function r and s in terms of f. So this is f of x. Okay, and we have to write it in terms of f. So we don't know what f is. I don't want you to write a piecewise function. We can write things in terms of f. Like up here, we could have taken this and wrote, written it as g of x equals 1 half, and then f of x minus 3 plus 2. And regardless of what f of x is, what kind of function, it could be a square root function, it could be a uh, any kind of function, doesn't matter. This shows all reflections or all transformations. Okay, so here we don't have to write the piecewise function. I could just represent it as f of x. Okay, so if I take a look, let's do r first. Okay, r looks like there is the same points everywhere, but it looks like it was a vertical stretch. You know, see that it's a vertical stretch. I don't think it moved left or right, up and down at all. It's just vertically stretched all of the points. And so we have to figure out how it vertically stretched. So from f of x to r of x, okay, let's take this point right here. Let's take that point right there. That looks like a 3. Okay, and this is also a three. This is also a three, and that's a three. Okay, but we have a four here, and we have an eight here. How does four become eight? You multiply it by two. Well, let's go ahead and put that multiply by two down here. You multiply it by two for it to become eight. If I take this point right here and that point right there, Okay, we have a negative 3 here, a negative 3 here, and then um, that looks like a 3, but that looks like a 6. Once again, what do we have to do? We have to multiply it by 2 for it to become that point. Okay, so it looks like we take the y values and multiply it by 2, which is a vertical stretch. So how did f of x become r of x? We just took f of x and multiplied it by 2. The y values. So once again, we don't have to worry about the reciprocal because we're multiplying the y values. So you write, let's go ahead and write it, r 
of x equals 2 times f of x. Okay, let's take a look at, is that s of x? Yeah, let's look, take a look at s of x. Okay, I'm going to just take that endpoint right there. You can't see it. I'm going to take that endpoint right there. It looks like we moved it from negative 6 to negative 3. So we know that we moved it uh, to the right, right. Okay, so we're going to take it from f of x to s of x. We know that we moved it right, 3. But we also reflected it over the x-axis, okay? Reflection over x-axis. I'm going to rewrite this because I want to put exactly what it does on the side. Okay, so write 3, which means we add 3 to x. Okay, and then uh, we have to reflect over x-axis. means multiply y by negative 1. Okay, I don't think there was any kind of dilations, multiplications that occurred. Um, let's see if I multiplied it. And I think because of these points are on 0, 0. And once again, you can write a table. You can make a table if you want. Okay, you could make a table. I mean, I could take, let's go ahead and write a table for x and f of x. You could just take some critical points like set negative 0 and negative 3, 3, and 0, 0. And I'm going to take that 3, 4. And then I can take a look at s of x and x. I can see exactly where those points went. That's a negative 3, 0. Those points are compatible with each other. And then it looks like it's a 0, negative 3. Those two points are compatible right there. And then we have a 3, 0, those points, and Du, 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 du. 6, negative 4, 6, negative 4, those points. A reflection, multiply y by negative 1, multiply y by negative 1, okay, that's already going to just give you the y values. If I add 3, add 3, if I take that, add 3, negative 3, 3, 3, whoops, I think Leo's finish barking. Okay, so that shows you that that's all that needed to happen. Okay, so for my blue function, we can just write s of x. We took f and we multiplied the y value. And remember, we have to take the reciprocal of anything that gets attached to x, subtract by 3. Okay, Good job. Next one. Okay, so f of x. And once again, we can write this f of x. We can write a table x f of x. So we have a 0. I'm going to take that point, 0. Uh, 0, and looks like that's a 1, 4, and 2, 8, and a 4, 8. Okay. 
I'm just going to put a point where I, okay, um, the easier one is R. I'm going to do R first. R just looks like it took those points and reflected it over the x-axis. Okay, so R of x equals negative, oh, wait a second. We're multiplying, we took the x's and we took the x values. Okay, we're multiplying the x values by negative one, which means, yeah zero and then it became negative one right it's negative one and four and that became negative two four i mean eight okay so we just took these values and multiplied by negative one and the way we write that i mean take the reciprocal if you want but based on f of negative x okay now the interesting one is the the next function which is going to be the blue one okay i'm going to make x and then s of x take that same point okay and it's going to be compatible with the first point of zero zero on f of x it's going to be now a 0, negative 4. So we know it went down negative 4. It went down 4. Okay, and then that looks like that point right there. Is it? I don't really know. Um, I'm going to take this point, and then I'm going to take that point. It looks like it horizontally stretched we can call it a vertical compression but you could see that 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 horizontal line stretched so i'm just going to write those i'm going to write the four it looks like four and eight four okay now I can make this very easy, or I can make it very complicated. Okay, we know that it went down four, right? So I'm going to take my x and f of x and zero, zero, one, four, two, eight, and four, eight. And I can take my y values and I can just subtract four, okay? So that's going to give me a uh, negative four, and that's going to give me a zero, and that's gonna give me a four, and that's gonna give me a four. Now, whatever happened to the dilations, I'm gonna put it all on the X. If I put it isolated and put it all on the X value, Okay, then I don't have to go through my order of operations and do the y value of first multiplying y value by a uh, y value by a, a a scale factor and then subtracting it by four. If I just put it on the x value, then we know it didn't move left or right. Okay, so we could just say that it just was a, a horizontal a stretch okay so if i just say this is a horizontal stretch i could take a look at this table and this table and see which ones correspond four four and the two and the four four and the four look at the y values the four and the four right and then i could just say hey what can i take right here 
by four and make it, how does two right here become this four? How does this four become a? And the answer to that is to multiply it by a two. So that is a vertical stretch by a scale factor of two, okay? So if I write my equation for S, it will state X equals, okay? And then we could take F. Remember, we have to take the reciprocal of two. That's one half X, and then what happened to the y? It just moved down four. Okay? Once again, if I just, that's how you can play around with the, the, the dilations. I mean, if you see it down, I mean, if I saw right or left, then I would not try to use my x values for the dilation. Okay, I would call it a vertical compression. Okay. Next one. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Let me see how many do I have. Well, I just have six graphs that I need to graph. Um, Sketch the parent function, then graph g of x on the same axis, then write down the coordinates of the vertex and the equation of the axis of symmetry for g. Okay, so we have to, let's go ahead and take, factor out the one-fourth. When I do that, I'm actually dividing by one-fourth the same thing as multiplying by I need to multiply these by 4. Mm, so I get a, a half of, it's going to be 2, squared plus 1. Okay. Um, so let's see. There's a lot of things going on. Basically, I just want you to grab. Okay, um, so I could make a table. I think I'm going to make a table down here. Okay, parent function. Put some points on there, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, and then 2, 4, negative 2, 4. Okay, just done a better job. Okay, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4. Okay, um, let's see the sequence. We always multiply first and then add or subtract. Let's look at the x value. What happens to the x? To the x, we have to, it says multiply by 1 fourth, but we have to take the reciprocal, right? So we're going to multiply it by 4. Four, and then add by two for the y's. It's helpful if this is going to multiply it by four, and then we're going to add two. For the y's, we're going to add just add one. So we are end up with a new transform function zero two and one and four, four, uh, four, six, and uh, two, and four, negative four, two, and one, two, um, it's going to be off the charts. 8, 10, and 5, negative 8, um, plus 6, negative 8, negative 6, and 5.
Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. So if I had to describe this, well, let's go ahead and graph first. Okay. Sketch the parent function. Okay. Parent function. Here's my parent function. There's my parent function. And then two, one is my vertex. And six, two. And Oh, that was a negative. Negative two, two. Negative two, two, right there. And a negative of six, five. Negative six, five. It's very, very wide. <laughs> parabola. Then write the coordinates of the vertex and the equation of the axis of symmetry. The vertex is going to be 2 comma 1 and the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. And if I were to describe this, if I were to, it would be a uh, up one and then on the x it would be a vertical horizontal horizontal stretch by a scale factor of four and then we went right two it doesn't give you tell you to do that but I'm just going to do it. Okay. Good job. Next. Let's see. Uh, we don't have to factor out the B value inside the function. But once again, I'm going to make a table. Zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one, two, four, negative two, four. And then let's tell, let's see what it tells me to do. For the x, I'm going to add 4. For the y's, we're going to first multiply it by 2, and then subtract it by 3. So my new transform points are 4, 5, 3, six and two and then zero negative three and two negative one and then two negative one and then eight five and five okay go ahead and put the parent function on there two four there we go there we go and then the transform function four negative three five negative one Three, negative one, six, and then five, and two, and then five. There we go. Okay, okay. vertex is 4 comma negative 3 
and the axis of symmetry is x equals 4. Now, if I were to put a description on this, we went right, 4, and in, in order for the y values, that would be multiply the y value by 2, so that would be a vertical stretch. And then we went down 3. Okay, good job guys. Okay, identify the parent function and state the transformation, then graph. Okay, identify the parent function. What kind of parent function is this? This is a reciprocal function. State the transformation. It doesn't say in order. Okay, so the reciprocal function looks like um, f of x equals 1 over x. So in order to get that negative 1 up there, we have to multiply the y value. The entire function. So when you multiply the y value okay, uh, by a negative 1, what it does is it's a reflection over the x-axis. It reflects over the x-axis. When you multiply, the 6 will become negative 6 because you're multiplying the y values. Okay, Let just, let's go ahead and I'm just going to put right here, multiply the y values by negative 1. Okay, and then the second thing that happens is, well, you just left three right here. This is the left three. And then up four. Okay. So I could take some parent function points. Uh, of a reciprocal function. So I'm going to have a, uh, let's see, zero is going to make that undefined. And then one, one, and then negative one, negative one. And then uh, it, when y is, it's going to be undefined. Okay, so I'm going to take Reflection of multiply y's by negative 1. So I'm going to take that by multiply by negative 1. And then I'm going to add it by 4. Left 3 is a minus 3. So that is going to give me a negative 3. Doesn't matter what I do to undefined. It's still going to be undefined. Okay. It's still going to be undefined at negative 3. A 1, a negative 2. Mm, let's see, multiply by negative 1, and then negative 2, 3, and then negative 4, and that's going to be a 1, 5, negative 4, 5, and then negative 2, 3. It doesn't matter if I subtract. It's this is still going to be undefined, and but we got to figure out what y is at four. Okay, so our uh, vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals negative three, x equals negative three, right there, right there. That's the vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 4. y equals 4 right here. Okay. Um, negative 2, 3. Negative 2, 3. Negative 2, 3 is going to be that point right there. And then negative 4, 5, right here. Okay? Good job. Okay, next one. This is 
a square root function. The parent function is a square root function. Let's see what happened. We have to first, I'm going to take this k of x and rewrite it. Negative 2x plus 6. I'm going to take negative 2 out, and it's going to be x minus 3. So now my horizontal translation is going to be different. It was a plus 6, now it's a minus 6. Okay, so for my x value, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by a negative 2. That's two different things. So when you multiply it by a negative 1 to the x, that is a reflection over the uh, y-axis. The x's are going to change. So a 4 is going to become a negative 4. Number two, okay, uh, we're also multiplying by, remember we have to take the reciprocal, so we're multiplying one half to x, so that is going to be a horizontal compression. And then number three, we are going to add three to x. That is going to be a right three. Okay, so we're gonna do all of these. Okay, and then, so let's go ahead and take our x and y values of the parent function, which is zero, zero, um, one, one, and let's do four, two. That's a square root function. And then, uh, let's see. Everything is being done to the x. So we have to take x and multiply by a negative 2. And then we have to add 3. So our, the y's remain the same. 3, 0. Negative 2, 1, 1. Negative 8, 5, 2. Uh, do you see my mistake? I <laughs> multiply it by a negative one half. I'm sorry, Gary came home and I'm working downstairs. So, okay, so you multiply it by a negative one half and then you add three. Okay, so that's going to be the same. These are going to change half, negative one half, that's going to be negative one half, so that's going to be a 2.5, negative half, a negative two, negative two, it's going to be a five. No, negative two, that's going to be a one. God, I can't think, too many things going on. One, okay? So we have 3, 0, 2.5, 2.51, and 1, 2. One, two. That's right. So the parent function Remember, it looks like this, 4, 2. So that would be a vertical, that was a reflection over the y-axis. Okay, we moved it right, 3. And we also made it um, a horizontal compression. So we took it and we squeezed it. And I shouldn't add this little, I'm going to take this off and just Put it so my arrow goes right here so you could see how short it became like the width became very short horizontal compressed okay good job next one these are both quadratics 
Okay, so this is a quadratic function, a parent function, and I'm going to take k of x and take the 3 out. Okay, let's see what happens to the x. To the x value, okay, we're going to multiply it by... by one-third first. And then to the x value again, we're going to add 2. And then it doesn't matter that it's in this order, but to the y, we're going to add 7. Okay, so quadratic, let's go ahead and write our point. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4. And we're going to multiply it by to the x value, 1 third. And then we're going to add 2. And we're just going to add y value. Okay, so we're going to get uh, 2, 7. The vertex is. Oh, this is going to be. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be off the one third, two, two and one third, and then eight, negative minus one third. So it's going to be one and two thirds, one and two thirds, and eight. That's really all I need. Um, let me two thirds. So it's going to be two and two thirds, and seven, eleven. Oh, wow. And then one and you know, one third, negative two thirds, one and one third, and 11. Okay, that's gonna be two. I'm gonna redraw my, I'm gonna make this just be the origin right here. Okay. Um, in order to graph it better. So I'm going to do, let's do 1, 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's my vertex. Okay. And then um, 2 and 1 third. So 2, 1, 2, it's going to very be very skinny. Two and one third and eight, seven, eight, right here. And that's going to be that little thing right there. And then two and two thirds and eleven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, like that, like that. It's going to be ridiculously. Okay, because when we multiplied it by one third, we made it a horizontal compression. Compression. Okay. I mean, we completely compressed this horizontal. We squeezed it in. We sque squeezed this in so that it becomes very, very skinny. Okay, let's do the last one. Okay, it looks like there's a lot going on, but once again, it's a quadratic function. I'm gonna take g of x, and I'm going to factor out a negative, so it becomes x plus two. You still have to f isolate the x. Okay, and then minus 1. And so let's go ahead and see what happens to x. What happens? We multiply by a negative 1. So multiplying x by a negative 1, and that's a reflection over the y-axis. And then number 2, to the opposite of plus 2. So 2x, we subtract... 
two, <laughs> left two, move left two, and then to the y values and two y, we uh, multiply by one over four, and then four we two y. I don't know why I put the two there. We um, subtract by a uh, negative minus one. We subtract by one. Okay, so it's a reflection over the y-axis. Okay, we went left two, down one. And because we multiplied the y values by one fourth, that would be a um, vertical compression. So you'll see these, this parabola becoming like wider, okay, because we're vertically compressing. So we have an x and a y, and 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4. So 2y, we're going to multiply this by negative 1 first, and then subtract it by 2. And to the y's, we're going to multiply it by 1 fourth. And then we're going to subtract it by 1. Okay? So x and y, we have a minus 2, minus 1. And then that becomes a negative 1, negative 3. Uh, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. And then a 1 and a negative 1. And 1 fourth. And negative one fourth. Oh, wait a second. One fourth, negative three fourths. Right? Ah! Multiply it by one fourth. So it's going to become one fourth minus one. So that is going to be a negative three fourths. And that's the same thing right here. Uh, negative 2, negative 4, uh, 1, that's a 0. And then 2, it's going to be a 0. And then that's going to also be a 0. So it's on the vertex. Okay, negative on the origin. Negative 2, here is my vertex. Negative 3, negative 3 force is going to be kind of negative 3 force right there. Negative 1, 3 force, negative 4, 0, and then 0, 0. This is very flat. This is very flattened. Okay, very flattened parabola. Okay, is that it? Is that all of them? That was a lot of fun. Okay, good job, guys.